so for those of you that don't, that don't know, Mark Sargent, he put out a video in 2014 called The Flat Earth Clues. It's been mentioned a few times here. Um, he is the host of a weekly podcast called Strange World with his co-host Karen B. Um, if he wasn't shadow banned on YouTube, I can't imagine how many subscribers he would have. Because he, he's charismatic, he's well-spoken, a true gentleman. Put your hands together for Mark Sargent. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a couple corrections really quick. Uh, first of <laughs> all, uh, I created the clues in 2015. Uh, did you? Is that up there? Perfect. Um, I am here for you guys. This is a kind of different. This is kind of unique for me because most of the time when I do groups like this, the, the, the audience is 80% new, like first timers. And then once I heard the history of this group, it's like, oh, oh my god, they're all veterans. That's, that's not good. That's, that's, that's kind of intimidating because you guys know a lot. Uh, you, you know a lot of these things already. I'm not here to, to lecture you, and so I'm not. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you kind of a brief history of how we got here, maybe some little trivia that you don't know about you know, some of the players involved, including myself, and then afterwards, I'm going to open the floor up to questions for as long as I have time, and then after I'm done, I am here for you. So come, please, come up to me and ask questions, whatever burning questions they are. So, you know, if there was something on David's app that you didn't think was completely clarified, or something that Austin Witsit said where he was using vocabulary that just went over your head, which he tends to do on a regular basis, or Jaron didn't cover it, or, or whatever, I, I will do the best that I can uh, to answer it. So I will be here for, you know, from now and the rest of the evening, whatever we're doing post, and then there's a breakfast tomorrow for some of us, and then I'm not leaving until Monday morning early. So Monday morning, that's your, you won't be able to talk to me anymore. No, but you can always email me. So, real quick, how we got here. Um, the channel and the clues, you know, you see some of the covers uh, above. It started, uh, yeah, I started looking into it in 2014. It was basically just a cry for help more than anything else. I was looking for, I had gone down every conspiracy rabbit hole you could think of. Every one you could think of. I, had, I never got married or had kids, and so I had a lot of time on my hands. Looked into every, I mean, seriously, if you guys can think of a conspiracy, I've got an opinion on it. Some I like, some I don't like. JFK, for example, uh, yeah, do I think that a lone gunman, who then in turn was killed by a lone gunman, you know, lightning striking lightning, do I think that happened? No, of course not. But do I think that Bigfoot had Elvis's baby? No, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna go along with that one, probably. But I've got an opinion on it, but, but because I start my day with Flat Earth on a regular basis, I don't have a leg to stand on. I'm not going to condemn anything. So if you come up to me, it's like, Mark, have you looked into this? Mark, have you have you thought about this? Beforehand, I'd be like, uh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. But now, I was like, you know what? You know, give, I'll give you a couple minutes. I don't care how weird it is. Of course, of course. Um, also, uh, obvious first, oh crap. That's right. Is it just going to disappear all the time? Oh, I just, oh, that's all right. They, they know, but... Oh. Okay, I'll touch it every once in a while. Okay. So, real quick, let's get the obvious out of the way. My name is Mark Sargent. The channel says Mark K. Sargent. It's not a typo. It's not because somebody chose Mark Sargent. It's because K is my middle initial. K stands for Kendall. It doesn't stand for kill them all, let go, God sort them out, or kangaroo, or kiwi, or anything like that. It is, it's K for Kendall. I'm pretty sure it's British. Uh, I started this in, you know, looking at this in 2014. Uh, what I basically was doing was I was trying to figure out, it was on my bucket list, the last conspiracy that anyone wants to look at. Why would anyone look at Flat Earth? It's stupid, it's ridiculous, it's silly. Don't, don't ever look at it. And I, you know, while, while David was banning people that were talking about it, I was, I was doing some research on it. And I was trying to prove the globe in a court of law, and I was leaning on NASA, and it wasn't working. I have to tap this like once a minute, don't I? That's okay. Right. Just, you guys like wink at me, like wave and I'll help them. So um, I was trying to use NASA, and it wasn't working. It's for nine months from the summer of 2014 up until February of 2015. I looked at it and then finally gave up, and February 10th, 2015, I made the Flat Earth Clues, or at least the first of them. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, uh, had that Jerry Maguire moment where it's like, you know what, I think I've got it. And it was some of the clearest writing I've ever done. I uh, call it God-inspired, call it whatever you want, but I woke up and I had the narrative in my head, in my own voice. 
And while I was taking the shower, it's like, oh yeah, that's a paragraph, that's a paragraph, that's a paragraph. And I sat down and I wrote the whole thing with almost no edits at all. And then I put it out, and I didn't know anything about video editing, obviously, because I've inspired a little side story. Uh, Jaren, the only reason Jaren has a channel is because he looked at the Flat Earth Clues and he hated my video editing so much. He, and he literally said, he goes, if this guy can make a channel, I can make a channel. And so he went down to the secondhand store, I'm not making this up, and he bought a copy, a used copy, I think it was Visual Studio 12, which is really old nowadays, for like six bucks. Took it home and started creating a Flat Earth channel. So, and, and I was worse than that. So I was just, you know, I, I, I put some pictures, I just grabbed everything I could off of Google, and then uh, made, you know, then I narrated it. I was done, I was like, wow, I'm gonna narrate it. So I used a $20 piece of crap Logitech mic and I narrated it and put it out there and it was a cry for help. It was like, I can't figure out the globe anymore in a court of law. I can't do it. But the internet, I do, yes, people generally are, are pretty dumb sometimes, but the internet hive mind misses nothing. And because of that, I put it out there, and, I, and that's why I put all of my contact information. I mean, if you click on this, there's, there's a link in there, and it has my email address, my phone number, uh, my physical address, bank account, routing numbers, everything you can think of is out there. My passport number, and no, seriously, it's, it was meant because I wanted an academic to call me up and say, here's where you went wrong, you forgot to carry the two, you can shut down your channel now. And nobody did. And instead, I had people like Matt Boylan contacting me. He was Matt Boylan, by the way. If you guys remember Math Powerland, he was literally the first guy to call me after Clue Two. The guy had instincts. Say what you want about his drunk ramblings. The man had instincts, and he called me up, and he goes, "Why aren't you answering my texts?" And this is back in 2015, and I go, "Because I don't have a cell phone." And he's going, you guys don't know, if you try to text somebody that has a landline, the texts don't go anywhere and it doesn't bounce back to you and say that they disappeared. So anyway, uh, so the clues went out there and everyone started contacting me and it started spreading. David Weiss got involved uh, after he started to stop banning people. He and I met at the first conference. Uh, the late Rob Skiba, of course you guys know the famous story about that, how he was listening to it on a ride to his tax accountant. And then he listened to the whole, it was an interview that I did with Canary Cry Radio. And they, he listened to the whole thing again on the way back and then he called me up and, and then we became friends. Uh, and Rob was such a great asset to us and, and I'm gonna miss him. But his content was out there forever. <laughs> and if you guys have never been, I know you guys are veterans and I'm probably giving, giving stuff you already know, but uh, Rob Skiba's website, if you've never been there, is called testingtheglobe.com. It is absolutely flawless. I love everything he's done. Uh, it was really, really great. Um, I want to get some of the some of the stuff out of the way because I get accused of things from time to time. I've been doing this for nine years now, and there's some stickers that I can't peel off. One, of course, was when Eric decided he was going to Eric Dubé, of course. And again, I'm not condemning Eric Dubé in terms of his content. He's made a lot of great content. I disagree with some of his political views, which he's mixing in, but that in no way diminishes his flat Earth content. You know, he called me a shill back in the day, but he was calling all sorts of people shills. He condemned our first conference in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, back in the day. Is it North Carolina or South Carolina? Raleigh. South? South. So, anyway, uh, and then Matt Boylan. So it was the three of us that were doing things. I didn't know about Eric's content, and Matt I did know because he was from Canada. Uh, Matt has kind of fallen off. I think he moved to an island off of South America. I, I heard he was trying to start some sort of cult. But I, I'm not exactly positive on that. And I heard there was a rumor, if anyone knows it, I'd love to hear from you. I heard that Eric, you know, who has been living in Thailand for a long time, is actually now living, or was actually visiting in Idaho, but I have no proof of this. So, there you go. Um, other quick things would be, uh, was I responsible for, well, you know, a show of hands really quick. How many people have actually seen the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve? Okay, quite a few. Um, that was, I. It, I've got mixed feelings on it. If you've ever heard anything I've done, uh, I knew what was gonna happen when I set that in motion, which was when the film company from Los Angeles contacted me and they said, hey, can we, can, can we do, can you help us out there? Yeah, I was the one that put the casting together and, and got everybody, you know, circle the wagons and, and make this thing happen. It was supposed to be a human interest piece, which they turned into a hit piece, but it turned out actually pretty good because in the hit piece, they decided that it made the audience feel safe. Again, even behind the curve, the title was a great title. It's like, oh, we're gonna make fun of Flat Earthers. And so when they showed it in the theaters, you know, people were just like, oh, I sat in with studio audiences at different film festivals, and they said 
that uh, uh, you know what I was listening. You know, I had a hat and sunglasses, and they, they for the first 20, 30 minutes, most people didn't think it was real at all. They thought it was a piece of docufiction. They thought, and I'll give you a quick quote. Some of you already know this, but I'll, I'll give this story really to, really quick, and I don't want to ramble too much before I, I, I do want to open it up to questions. Which was there was a, an editor in Hollywood, an independent film editor, and they just showed it to him with no context. The movie behind the curtain, and afterwards he, he goes, "Wow." He goes, how much money did you have to, for this movie? I go, are you sure this is an independent film? And they go, what do you mean? It's like, all those actors, they played it so straight. It's like, well, what was the cast for this? And the, and the guy is like, no, 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 there were no actors in this. These were all real people. And the guy just freaked out. He's like, whoa, that conference, that actually happened? And it's like, yeah, they, we, we were there for three days. It's like, oh, I gotta watch this thing again. And, and it generated a lot of interest. It ran on Netflix for the full three-year run, and it was promoted heavily on Netflix. Yes, uh, do, did, it, did it anger a lot of flat earthers? Yes, and I always add, and, and feel free, you can, I know what you're gonna say, which is, okay, what would you remove out of behind the curve if you would make it? So oh, I'd remove the astronaut, and the psychologist, and the, psych, and the uh, scientists, and uh, you know, all those people. And it's like, well, then it kind of turns into a propaganda film. Because it was made the way it was, it became safe for academic institutions. You guys don't know, or maybe some of you do if you listen to my interviews, I have done so many interviews where in universities, it's on the syllabus now. In sociology and psychology and science, ch and science classes, it's required viewing for kids. It's like, are you kidding? We got so much mileage out of that. I, I do not regret it. Uh, do I regret the commercial in Australia? A little bit, yes. It was a little bit silly, but at the same time, I did it because the VP of the company that ran the commercial was one of ours. And so he was quietly, and he wouldn't even, he was, he was totally in the closet when I was down there. He was, uh, you know, shook my hand, like made sure that he wasn't too chummy with me. And it's like, okay, I see what you're doing there. You know, anything for Flat Earth, you know, they didn't have to fly me down to do it, so. Um, after that, you know, the, the, the clues were turned into books. And we did conferences. The, the conferences have been wonderful. The meetups have been were nonstop. In fact, I'll give you a quick story. Um, in 2019, before the pandemic hit, we were bulletproof. I, I know some of you guys have been here since 2019. You know, before 2019, you've been in it since before that. We were bulletproof. We could do no wrong. We did conferences in seven countries, and I could I lost count about how many meetups there were. There were so many meetups in different parts of the country and in other countries. In fact, if you want to have fun, and I don't hit, hit you with a lot of stuff. Go into Google and type in Flat Earth and convert it to a language of your choice. Then take that phrase, put it back into Google and see what happens. We're all over the place. Most people, because we're only, I only speak English, uh, we are everywhere. We're, we're in China, we're, I mean the film, like Behind the Curve was played for a week in Mos at the Moscow Film Festival, which was awesome. Uh, we, we've been in we've been all sorts of places. So in 2019, we were pretty much bulletproof, and then the pandemic hit in 2020. And that's when everything just, it, it changed. We didn't die, but we were taken back for a while. We were repressed. Meaning what happened was uh, we couldn't do the conferences. Like for example, we were supposed to do the big conference in Vegas in 2020, but we couldn't because Vegas said everyone who went there had to wear a mask. And that's what they told us, like, yeah, you're not gonna get in a group. Like, you got this group right here, I don't really see any masks. So that would have that been bad, so we had to postpone it. So we couldn't do any big conferences. Uh, the meetups were kind of restricted, you know, because restaurants, it was tough to, to do in places like this. I'm sure this place wasn't, wasn't open. I don't know how long this building's been there. Uh, so yeah, once, and then once the mandates rolled back, we just moved forward again and just started cranking it. And, and we, we haven't looked back since. I, there's so many people now. The, the, 20, the, the, the conference we just did in Vegas back in October was wonderful. Uh, the meetups have been fantastic. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, you're one of the most veteran groups I've seen. There are other groups filled with veterans, not as big as this and not as organized as this, uh, especially over in England. So kudos to your to your members, uh, your board members who would do this. It's absolutely fantastic you guys are doing this. And yeah, after after all that, so, you know, nine years and still going strong. Uh, the 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 players, we yeah, we lost a couple along the way. Absolutely, but but nothing outlandish. The channels haven't been shut down. Uh, if anything, it, pro it pro promoted us to keep going into other venues, other platforms. So I'm not on. I mean, yeah, I'm on. I I manage the YouTube account, 
but I don't manage pitch shoot and bright and rumble or anything like that. And it forced Jaren to, it forced us to go out to all these different things. And it was, it, that made us diversify into just about every platform. And then it, you guys, of course, have seen all the TikTok stuff, which was so fun to, for us to see because the, the kids, you've heard the stats, it's part of my speech, I'm not gonna try to bore you with this, but you, you know the stat, which is one out of every three kids now, they want their career, they want to be social influencers. That's a tall order. They're not going to be able to pull it off. So they're desperately looking for content because they're so young, they, they don't have any content to put up there. And because of which, they're grabbing a lot of flat earth is interesting. They know it generates content. The, some of the big channels have covered just about every big channel you can ever think of has done a flat earth video. I don't care what it is. You know, Mr. Beast has done multiple, uh, PewDiePie has done multiple. Some of the biggest, uh, um, uh, ah, crap. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but there's a lot of them. So what was happening was they were making TikTok videos from our stuff in YouTube, and then we grabbed the TikTok compilations and put them back on YouTube, and then it just becomes cyclical, and it's been fantastic. Uh, and then, and lately, sorry, last thing, and then I will open up to questions, which is, because um, I really do want to know what, what burning questions you guys have, is uh, the, the debates have really ramped up recently. Uh, you guys probably caught some of the Kant, Proven, Dean Odal, Debates, you know, where you know, pastor on pastor crime, where they just sat up there and just ha hammered each other for four hours. As much as it seemed like a like a wasted effort, at the end of the day, there were a lot of pastors that followed Dean Elder and a lot that followed Greg Locke, and they just latched onto it and they had their opinion on it, and that just rippled out, and those ripples created more ripples, and it was awesome. So, and, and again, Austin Witsit. Uh, if you ever want to have fun, you want to watch somebody tear apart somebody in debate. Watch Austin Witsit from Witsit Gets It. I, I can't sing enough praises. But only second, last thing I swear, only second to him, if you've never heard him, now granted, this guy is a bit of an acquired taste, would be Nathan Oakley over in London. Nathan Oakley's been ripping people to shreds for years. Now, he's abusive and his language is not, you know, Austin doesn't swear, you know, he keeps it pretty clean. Nathan Oakley is like, it's YouTube, I can say anything I want. And he just launches in uh, to people. And I swear some of the people that debate against him are, are just there for the, the masochist feel of it. So anyway, bottom line, Flat Earth is doing great. You want me to sum it up? You're right, everyone else is wrong, all right? You guys are taught, when you guys are out there, We've done the research, we've done the experiments, we've done, we've, we've torn, I mean, come on, NASA just this week, or I'm sorry, just this last couple months, think of all, think of all the space programs that have just collapsed recently. You had um, India crash their, crash their probe with a computer graphics system that was just out of a 1994 video game. You had <laughs> Japan crash their thing tip over, supposedly launch their probe to take what was the finest dying breath shot I've ever seen, perfectly di di digitally smudged, and then they shot that thing back a quarter million miles to the Earth, even though it was absolutely out of telemetry? No. And then the US, the, uh, the Odysseus project, which you guys just saw, which was just ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. You know, NASA took credit for part of that, even though it wasn't really under the NASA banner. Those are three probes, three crashes, and the reason why is because they don't know how to fake it. Because of people like you in the room, like, you know, you guys know what to look at, you guys know what to microscope. Social media has changed everything. Where if there's a single image or a single video clip, everybody's opening it up in every sort of Photoshop filter you can think of and analyzing it. And I've said this many times, but I'll say it again here. If somebody came to me with a trillion dollars and they said, can you help us fake the, the next moon mission? I'd be like, yeah. No, I'd be scared to death because all it takes is one person. Oh, last thing, I swear to God, I know I've been saying this. Last thing, and this will give you an idea of why. Why they can't fake the moon missions. Here's why. All you have to do is go back to the, uh, the first Lord of the Rings movie. Some of you know this story. Which is the first Lord of the Ring, the Fellowship of the Ring, right? Think about this. This movie was shot, edited, production assistant after production assistant, millions and millions of dollars spent, and yet the first version that was released in the theater, when the hobbits were leaving the Shire, in the corner, right-hand corner of the screen, there is a road and a white car drives through it. <laughs> and nobody caught it at all. All it takes is one screw up. But think of all the people and all the dailies and all the, the editing you're doing. Nobody caught it because they're all focused on the hobbits. And, the, and all it took was one guy drop his popcorn, look up in the wrong place for one second. It's like, what's, what's that doing there? I shouldn't be there. 
And that was it. He contacted the, 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 the studio, the studio called the studio, and then all of a sudden, oh my god. And they had to recut the, the, the first version of Lord of the Rings. And it's like, if that can happen with a, with a again, and that's you know, fiction for a living. You know, they're paid to create the illusion that what are the odds that NASA now, you could do it in the 60s and 70s, you could get away with it, barely, barely. But now, no, you absolutely cannot. So, there you go. Uh, so anyway, because of people like you, and I, I am eternally grateful to everyone here for, for keeping the faith and, uh, and again, being open-minded, being part of the truther community. I don't use conspiracy uh, community as much as I do truther anymore, because it's the truth. You're, you're right, they're wrong, they're in denial. If you want to call it cognitive dissonance, that's fine, although denial is an easier word to say. Uh, that's what you're running into. And, and one, sorry, one more thing. That's which is, you, you don't, don't be discouraged. One of the biggest problems of being in Flat Earth is you want people to turn, but they don't turn when you want them to. Right, again, every, every year during the holidays, I say, do not sit in front of your Thanksgiving table. I know what you want to do. Don't do it. Don't do it. I know what you want. You want to sit out. It's like, hey, Fred, what have you been doing this year? Uh, and you lean in and say, yeah, I'll tell you what I've been into. I've been to flat earth. The worst thing you could ever, and you think that the other side of the, the tables would be, oh, that's a great idea. That's what, tell me more. Wise person living in the back of the cave. No, no, they're, they're going to come at you. So uh, anyway, don't, yeah, don't do it. But, but they don't turn when you all you're here. Same thing with me. I know there's some plus ones here that are barely making it through this. It's like, oh my god, the man's a lunatic. Which is like, look, I'm not here to uh, convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just put the idea in your head and let you run with it. And if you don't like it, great. You're gonna have to deal with it though, because it's like a marble in a paint can. There's some psychological tricks that I, I do that I don't even have to tell you about. Again, you know the old one, which is whatever you do don't think about elephants. And yet, you all did just now. There's an elephant and all sorts of heads out there. So Flat Earth kind of treated like that. That's all you have to do is say Flat Earth. And they will, through osmosis, eventually have to deal with it one way or the other. All right, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Questions, what do you got? Okay, you. Yeah, I was just thinking about this. You were talking about how they can't think of it. Right. I've seen recent videos with AI completely created by AI. Right. Is it possible that AI might be able to calibrate all the all the things and put the stars in place and be used to ramp that up? Okay. Yeah. Two things. One, AI. I get a strong opinion on AI. First off, for those of you who don't know, um, AI is not uh, self-aware. That has nothing to do. It's not like the movies. They changed the definition for whatever reason. AI used to mean computers that all of a sudden were alive. You know, like the Haley Joel Osment, Jula movie, was directed by Spielberg, that thing. Um, AI is very, very limited. You've seen what the, the weakness of chat GPT, it can only do so much. Now, can AI help you write a perfect paper or a, you know, it's, it's gonna crush the, uh, the education system, for example, you know, because you might as well never assign a book report ever. Because, uh, but the smart kids, if you're smart, I knew, actually knew a girl who was thrown out her freshman year of, of college because her paper was too perfect. It's like, that's where you make the mistake. She got lazy. All you have to do is say, no, no, no. Put in like 2% grammatical errors and 0.5% spelling errors. Smudge it up a little bit. And I'm such an enabler, but, but that would work, right? But as far as what you're saying with the star charts, okay, you can't, AI graphics cannot fake the moon mission, uh, especially in video, because you can't, they, they've already decided it. They, they're never gonna show stars in space. I don't know how they're getting away with it. Maybe it's because the general public is just, Dumb. But like Artemis 1, for example, got 50, 50 miles from the moon and there's no stars in the background. Uh, and the moon was low res and it was absolutely horrible. The, the, the reason why they can't do it is because they didn't do it in the past. Is There'd be such a huge contrast. Remember, because it'd be beautiful. If you could actually show the star fields in the background of any of uh, the space shots, it'd be gorgeous. It'd be such a stark contrast to what's actually being put out there. That, that people will be like, why didn't you have it in the first place? And of course the argument, you, please use this, throw it at people, because they'll say, why weren't there stars in the Apollo missions? And they'll say, well, it was an exposure setting. And it was a camera thing, because they had film. And it's like, okay, that was 1969 though. What happened now? What happened in 2024, right? Because cameras don't use film anymore. It's all digital. In fact, the, the, 
the future that we were promised, we did get. Yeah, no, we didn't get flying cars and robot servants and ray guns, but we did get amazing, I mean, cell phone technology it, you know, and camera technology is really, really amazing. So you can't do it. So, you, th so they decided not to use stars. Yeah, well, could they possibly be, maybe pull it off? But yeah, they might be able to, but they can't, they can't use it now. It's too late. The, the, it's, they've gone too far down the road with the narrative. So therefore, which is why they can't like radically change the spacesuits anymore. So, uh, hang on, you. On the same point, what about the high altitude balloon launches where they don't show stars? Yes. There's, yeah, you're, there's something to this, and I've, I've done a lot of business travel, and I know people that if you do enough business travel, the planes to avoid weather will get up around, and you can, there's some books on this, uh, around 45,000, 48,000 feet, you can get up there. You know, commercial airlines can cap out at about 50,000 feet, it's not that big a deal. But when they get up there, the stars start fading away. You know, even in the, you know, a beautiful night sky. And there, there's some books, now granted, I think they kind of disguise that, there's some books talking about how UFOs are more apparent at like 48,000 feet, the mystery at 48,000 feet. But yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. The balloons do the same thing. And, oops, sorry, the, uh, yeah, 120,000 feet. Yeah, don't get me started on the Red Bull jump, which you guys all, all know about by heart, hopefully. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, well, you know what, I'll, I'll give you a quick, I'll give you a trivia on that one. So the Red Bull jump, if you guys know, uh, Felix Baumgartner, Red Bull sponsored it, 130,000 feet. And they uh, use a, huge, a severe fisheye lens. So, it, and again, it made this really, really dramatic shot. It made it look like he was at the edge of space, which I love. Thank God Neil Tyson is alive because he, he, you know, he said it on stage. It was one of the biggest mistakes he ever made, which was he said, "There's no." He, he thought the Red Bull jump was scientifically dishonest. But then he added, he goes, "You can't see the curve from 130,000 feet." Can't see it, that stuff is flat, right? Which was perfect, it was out, it's like, because I throw it at people, it's like, oh, he's your priest, he's your guy, there's only three media scientists in the world, and he said there's no, uh, there's no curvature. Uh, but, but the producers I've talked to over the years, I, they all said the same thing, I go, why did you know full well the Red Bull jump is a fisheye lens, you know it's a wide angle lens that shows curve, and you know, the, the whole world isn't the size of, of Arizona or New Mexico or wherever they shot it from. And they said, and it, they said, matter of fact, they said, yeah, but it was a good shot, wasn't it? It was, uh, and it goes a dramatic shot, and that's what the media cares about. They, they want a, yeah, they want it. It makes it look like he's an astronaut in space. And yes, yeah, they, yeah, they screwed up. They use a regular camera in the inside of the capsule. Again, production mistake. All it, which is why they have a tough time faking it, because all it takes is one guy to screw up. Anyway, you, you had a question. Oh, how dare you bring up Elon Musk? How dare you bring up that name? But do you think that it's boring companies trying to create Mars underground? Okay, Elon Musk, for those of you who, uh oh, uh oh, didn't mean to do that. I gotta pause that. I don't think we wanna see his face constantly. Come on. Okay, so while she's doing that, uh, Elon Musk. All right. Where do I begin with Elon Musk? He is, here, here was my problem with him. He showed up on my radar back in 2017. If you guys remember, some of you, he said casually back then that he was gonna send two tourists around the moon in 2018. I mean, we're talking not even not even 18 months after he announced it. And I'm, and I'm, I'm in Canada, and I'm, I'm looking at stuff, I'm going, wait a minute. That's, that's not even remotely possible because, uh, you know, the timeline, he didn't have a rocket, he didn't have a capsule, he didn't have a crew. How can you even begin to, to announce something like that? And of course it never happened and neither did the uh, Google X Prize. That didn't happen either. But he seems to be, for all intents and purposes, you know, a lot of, like, for those of you who don't know, he's not even, he's not even American, he's South African, right? He's, he's, he's a heir to a South African gem mining fortune, right? And, you know, he never had to work a hard day in his life. Um, but he seems to be a money funneling puppet for the U.S. government more than anything. People don't know. It's like, all right, you guys understand. You're old enough to remember when Microsoft, Bill Gates was the smartest guy in the world, or wow, he was the richest guy in the world because uh, everyone bought Microsoft products. Everybody understood that, right? Oh, it makes sense, right? Publicly, there are people out there that are privately rich that don't want to be on the, on the map. And then Jeff Bezos, well, of course, everybody had Amazon Prime, therefore he became the richest man in the world, right? 
What did Elon Musk do? Exactly. He didn't found Tesla. Uh, he didn't found PayPal. He didn't. I mean, he, the SpaceX is just an offshoot of NASA. That's all it is, right? NASA absolutely backed him. What What happened though was, I figured informally behind the scenes, they the government made an arrangement with him. It's like be whatever we want you want you to be, and we will funnel. Because basically, what was happening was they were pumping money into Tesla stock, to where Tesla stock is the most valuable stock in the world right now. You know, as far as car companies go, it's like really more than General Motors, more than you know, Chevy and Ford, and, and all that's like really Tesla. No offense to you, if you have Tesla drivers here, although you're going to be giving those cars up here pretty soon, I guarantee it. Uh, so, to your point, and it's a long way around to getting there, which is when it when it comes to his Mars project, because he just said what two weeks ago that he, he hopes he can he can help ship a million people to Mars by uh, 2030. It's like oh, okay, sure that'll happen. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I, but, but in doing that, you can funnel all sorts of money into things like a boring project. If, if you want to do more deep underground bunkers, but honestly, I think they, they probably got enough. I mean, I lived out in Denver when they built uh, DIA. And I talked to contractors out there that had to sign the NDAs. And they said, they said we can't talk about it. We can tell you that it is way bigger than you think it is. I mean, they, they say the obvious, like, why do you think, where do you think all that dirt came from? They couldn't even get rid of all the dirt from the holes they dug, so they turned it into, like, a barrier around part of the airport. So, anyway. Uh, I have two questions for you. The first yeah. question is, you mentioned once before I, that you'd want to put on a spacesuit and have get be tested by NASA. Right. And one. What ever happened with that? And the other question I have is, what are your favorite flat Earth proofs? Mm. Okay, uh, first thing, that's a good question, by, and by the way, thank you for bringing that up, which is, um, uh, by the way, the thing on the screen, by the way, is Flat Earth Clues, uh, The End of the World audiobook. I actually put the, my audiobook, I, I didn't tell my publisher, I don't think she still knows, I snuck it onto YouTube, and it's, what, five hours long? So you can listen to the whole book, I narrated the whole thing, if you guys want to listen to it for free, it's on YouTube. The, um, because I believe things should be free. Okay, to your question. I, one of my favorite proofs out there when it came to busting NASA was the spacesuit. If you guys know anything about physics, and I'm not gonna give you a test on this, the, the law is that pressure cannot exist to non-pressure without a barrier. It can't, it just, it never happens. You blow up a balloon with your mouth, you let it go a million times out of a million times, the balloon's gonna sail around the room because it's gonna equalize. Submarine guys know this, deep sea pressure guys know this all day long. So, why the only there's one only one thing ever in history that doesn't expand and explode in a vacuum chamber and that's the space suit it's like okay well can you please explain it how, how does it work how does this space suit work and what i did was i put a challenge out there and it ran for years i eventually just gave up because no university would, would touch it with a 10-foot pole probably for liability reasons but i didn't care i mean i would sign the waivers it's like look if i die then, it, then i die and the challenge was loan me a space suit because every space suit has worked perfectly from the 1960s they've gone through revisions they've never had a problem nobody's ever died in a space suit i'm not counting challenger and columbia and, and that crap uh, so wh wh why not, right? And so I said, loan me one of those things, put me in a university vacuum chamber, which would probably be about as big as this room, and they suck all the air out of it and they turn it into a vacuum. And then I would be sitting there in this spacer. How does that work? How do I live? How do I survive in this room? And the reason why, and people's like, aren't you worried you're gonna die? You know, it's like, oh, well, I mean, one, I'd love to have a, you know, a scientist walk in with a second spacesuit with me. But the other thing would be, the uh, reason why I was never worried was because I couldn't even come up with a fictional way of how that spacesuit could work. I'm a pretty creative writer when it comes to sci-fi stuff. And I, I, I'm about to my own horn, but I went over everything I could think of fictionally. It's like, how, how, what in the backpack could do, what could you do to, to make that backpack work and your spacesuit not explode? And I couldn't come up with anything short of a force field. And if it was a force field, well, you don't need a spacesuit. So what is it, right? And so that, that thing just collapsed. It just died. It, nobody, nobody, nobody touched it, and nobody would. So um, as far as my favorite flat Earth proofs, um, I'll give you the five real quick, and I'll, I'll give you the short versions if I can. Um, one, the, the one that gets most people into rooms like this and comes to the conferences is long distance photography, period. It's easy. In fact, the clues had nothing to do with long distance photography. I never, you could watch the clues a bunch of times, I never once in there said, go to a, take a camera to a body of water and start shooting video or, or photography. 
Never happened. But that's what most people get, how they most get into it, which is if the curvature is eight inches per mile per mile, then eventually something is over the hill. And again, 30 years ago, you couldn't have done this test because 30 years ago, our, our video technology wasn't very good. HD has, has changed everything. HD now has allowed us with a, you know, a, a simple $500 or whatever like that thing costs, uh, you know, it's, you know, even a thousand dollars. You can zoom in on, on boats as long as it's a clear day and see great stuff. Uh, second thing would be gravity versus vacuum of space, which I just talked about. Not only does the space suit not work, but why is our atmosphere still here? Why? Again, if you put a vacuum chamber above us right now and I had a valve and I pulled it instantly, violently, it would equalize. Some of you would probably black out. So when you go outside, why is our atmosphere still here? And, and I've had people, it's like, well, gravity. Oh, you mean the same gravity that's in this room? That you couldn't, the gravity in this room can't keep the, the air from going upstairs. But the gravity outside this room, oh no, no, that's, that's holding on. And, and that, that, the atmosphere gets sucked off. Uh, third would be the eclipse shadow, which of course, uh, if you guys are wondering, the eclipse is coming up on April 8th and it's running from uh, Texas to Maine, diagonal, if you're thinking of driving out there. I don't know if I'm going to go. It's a crapshoot. April in the in the eastern United States. I mean, it could be rainy, but who, who knows? You might get lucky. Um, the eclipse shadow is too small, meaning if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, then why is the eclipse shadow only 70 miles wide? Right? Which is coincidentally roughly what we say it is. Right? We, we you know we say that shadows are actual size or longer. Shadows never ever ever get smaller. For example, you never walk by a building and your shadow turns into an action figure. It never ever happens. But apparently in space, that happens all the time. It's like, okay, sure. Uh, and if that, was, if that was also the case, uh, then when the sun went in front of the moon, because the sun is 8,000 miles wide, then, oh crap, I didn't mean to start that stop. Sorry. Uh, that means when the sun passes, you know, uh, the earth passes in front of the sun, for like a lunar eclipse, we should see, instead of a red moon, we should see a big, the, the moon should turn into a giant eyeball because it should be like a 250 mile wide shadow, and it doesn't. Uh, fourth would be the, um, oh, the, the moon temperature. I don't know if you guys have ever done the test here. Moon have, you, have you guys even heard of the moon temperature test? Yeah, good, oh, some okay. of you have, okay. Yeah. I didn't think that was a thing. I didn't come up with it. Some random caller, God, I should look back on the call list and see who this guy was. Some guy called me on a, on a radio show thing back in 2016, and he goes, he goes, yeah, the moon temperature's cold. It's like, I don't even know what that means. It's colder at night, that's, that's a dumb statement. We were laughing at it. I was laughing at it. I'm in flat earth and I was laughing at this guy. And he's going, no. He goes, the, the moon, when in, we all know that when it's sunny, it's cooler in the shade, but in the moonlight, it's exactly the opposite. So if it's 80 degrees in the sun, it's 70 degrees in the shade, but if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade or warmer. And Rob Skiba was one of the first people that did a great test. He, he showed a 13 degree Fahrenheit swing. It's like, holy smokes. Scientists won't touch this with a 10 foot pole, just so you guys know. Nobody's done their dissertation on this, and they really, really should. And what that means is, uh, uh, it doesn't mean that the world is flat. No. No, it does not. I would clarify that right now. However, it does destroy the relationship between the sun and the moon. It means that the moon is its own light, which we've heard, you know, lesser, you know, greater, greater light to light the day and a lesser light to light the night, and they're both equal size, which is why the eclipse works. Last but not least, uh, my, my fifth favorite one is the Van Allen radiation belts, which you guys already know, uh, which is how did we get past the Van Allen radiation belts? Uh, it was something we overlooked. Van Allen announced them in 1959, about the same time as the Antarctic Treaty, coincidence, uh, you decide. And uh, he said that no one should ever fly above a certain altitude because you'll get cooked by the radiation. And then Kennedy came out and said, hey, choose to go to the moon and do the other thing, blah, blah, blah. And he, um, uh, and then they had to go back to Van Allen, and Van Allen said, uh, okay, we're gonna go really, really fast. That's where we're gonna get past it. And it's like, what are you talking about? It's multiple hours through each donut, you know, you're going, and you're going slower on the way home. These guys are gonna fry. And it's like, no, oh, no, it'll be fine. It's like, yeah, but what shielding are you using? The only things that stop radiation are uh, lead, gold, which is twice as dense as lead, and a whole bunch of water, which they use in power plants. You can't use this in aircraft of any kind. It's, it's like putting an anchor on the top of, of any rocket. It's never gonna work. And so you use aluminum and uh, uh, plastic, and yet nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. There's still, I think, four of them walking around today. I don't know if Buzz Aldrin or Aldrin died. I mean, he just keeps going. And then, um, 
Yeah, that, that, that was, and if you say, oh, okay, well, they are deadly, then you go to the, or you, that they aren't deadly, you go to the NASA website, you guys can look this up. There's a wonderful video called um, Orion Trial by Fire, which is them saying that they can't figure out the, the, Noir, the Mars project currently because they can't figure out the, the radiation shielding on their capsule. And they made this in 2014. So what happened? You know, Don Pettit said it, you know, it's like, well, you know, we lost that technology. I go back to the moon in a nanosecond. Honestly, that guy should not be working anywhere but a drive through. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you. Um, what is your perception and belief regarding extraterrestrials inside the firmament with us? Do I believe in, in other life forms other than us? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, before I got into Flat Earth, some of you guys know the story, I was big into um, night vision. Which was, and I was just because a British guy said, you want to look at some weird stuff, man? Get some night vision binoculars, not just straight up sights, binoculars, something like five power or higher, and start looking at the sky. And when you do that, your life will change because the sky is crawling with things. And at first you think, well, wow, there's a lot of satellites up there. I mean, tons and tons, things you cannot see with the naked eye. And then some of the satellites start doing things that you don't expect. You know, they're flying in different directions, they're stopping, they're starting, they're going ballistic, they're flying in formation. And it's like, okay, all right, what the hell's up there, right? That being said, be, Flat Earth changed my opinion on that. Do I think there's other, other civilizations before us? Of course there are. I mean, come on, how many ruins do you have to look at? And I don't necessarily recommend that you watch the entire Ancient Aliens series. I mean, it gets a little redundant after a while. But some of their points were well made, which was look at the ruins off of um, uh, Bimini Road, Kumapunku, Machu Picchu, uh, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, and so on and so on. I mean, I was at the real pyramids. You go, if you ever get the chance, go to the real pyramids, stare at the bit, you know, stand at the base and look up and, and try to figure out how they built it. Right? It wasn't us. So do I think they're from other planets? No, I don't think they're from Mars or, or Venus or Jupiter or anything like that. I just think they're older versions of us. And by that, I don't mean they look exactly like us. We've all heard the stories, you know, all sorts of, of different life forms. You know, they, they look, I mean, it's not like they have four arms or tentacles or anything like that. But, I mean, they look humanoid. But I think there's older civilizations that existed before us. They ran their course, and now they've moved on to, I don't know, subterranean or a place. And, and I also think they have rules by the way. I mean, all the stories we've heard over the years, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, you want to pick off some guys in a fishing boat, or you know, some people that are hiking, and a couple people here, a couple people there, that's fine. You cannot land in the middle of Salt Lake City with a giant golden spaceship and start taking selfies. It's not going to happen, because it would change everything. Every, everything that we know, the, the paradigm change would be too great, so I think there's, there's rules. If you guys, sorry, a little bit of a side note, if you've never looked it up, the greatest UFO sighting of all time was not Roswell, it was not uh, 1899 Aurora, Texas, it was 1561 Nuremberg. If you've never looked up the wiki page for it, look it up. It is mind-blowing. Which is Nuremberg, Germany, on a beautiful, clear April day, two giant space aircraft carriers just hovered above the city. And remember, they had no context. Science fiction didn't exist in 1561. And they hung out over the city for a full hour and just hammered on each other until a third faction showed up, which I don't know, were they the cops? Were they the UN? Uh, then it raised more questions than it had answers, uh, which was, why was the response time so low? I mean, come on, I could point a gun out this window, fire a few shots, there's cops here in five minutes. But you telling me two military organizations can fight over, the, uh, over a major city for a full hour? There must have been a dead zone. Something was missed. Again, all it takes is one little thing. So anyway, look that up if you get a chance. It's wonderful work you Yes? What year was that? 1561. You can look up all day long. I just look up the Nuremberg event, 15 seconds. They blame it on sun dogs. It's like, no, it was a beautiful spring day. And Brent, there was no photography back then, but an hour is a long time for sketch artists. And they sketch this thing in beautiful detail. You know, it's like, you know, they're having their toast and schnitz and glubin and whatever else they're having. It's like, it's like oh, this is great. You know, munch, munch. And, and it worked. It was absolutely fantastic. Yes. Okay, and I'm going to steal a little bit from, from Austin Whitsitt, and I know he's stealing from people as well, which is there's a couple things recently that we've been kind of focusing on, which are really glow killers for, for people like us. The, the general public, they're still not going to get it. Um, one, of course, is the jet streams, which is there have been planes recently that have been reporting record speeds. 
which is I always thought, and look, I did business travel. I always thought the jet stream was, oh, I'm pushing 120 miles an hour. It's not. Certain jet streams are pushing 350 miles an hour or more. And that's a lot because let's say you have a cruising altitude of like a 777 at like 575, right? That takes it up to 900. And yet the plane, and because it's a tailwind, the plane isn't under any additional stress because you know a plane like that can't do 900 miles an hour to break apart. So that, that's one of the things. But the other thing was the time zones, which was, and I highly recommend, if you get, if you get a chance to email me, any of you, and I will send you the Wizard link, because he covered this in some length, and it was an Australian guy that actually wrote in about it, which was, if, you, if it started out as a flat model and you tried to turn it into a globe, eventually you'd have to, I mean, you guys have all probably done it yourself at least once, you cut out a flat Earth mo model and try to stretch it over a globe, right? That's the point, you'd have to stretch it, you'd have to tuck here and put, push in here, but because of that, the radial lines, the 24 time zones, right, that spread out from the center, get warped, right? Because remember, it's like a bike spoke. In the center, lots of time zones, right? But when you get out way out to the edge, the time zones are really, really spread out because that's just how light works, right? So the guy, so Austin pointed out, and it's, I thought it was intriguing, look it up to your guy yourself though, is that the United States is at 60, 60th latitude north and Australia is 60th latitude south. And they're roughly about the same size, right? The United States and, and, and uh, Australia. Although if you look at our map, they're not so much. What's interesting is we have four time zones. They have two. And not only that, but they have nothing to do with the sun. And in fact, they squeeze in, I say two, it's technically two and a half, because one of the time zones is only 30 minutes different from the other. It's like, how does that work? Exactly. And when they switch to their daylight savings times, it goes from two and a half time zones to five. It's like, why, why would you stretch that to five? We, we have daylight savings. We don't, you know, it's still four time zones. It's just screwed up, screwed up numbers. And so that would make sense in our model because Australia is still the same size. And it's one of the myths that was put out there. It's like, oh, Australia is screwed up according to flat earthers. It's like, the size isn't screwed up. It's the time zones that's screwed up. And it only works if you took a flat earth model and tried to, or, and tried to stretch it into a globe. So again, does the, do, would the average person get that? No. No. You get a member of word up there? OK. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, kind of like when, I, when I've said to many a person, uh, you guys have done this yourself. And again, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. When I say the curvature of the Earth, because lots of people in this room have screwed up the curvature of the Earth formula at least once, right? It's eight, inch, eight, eight inches per mile. Everybody gets that, and I go square. And then everyone's like, oh my god, eighth grade algebra. I absolutely you know, do not get remember any of that stuff. Uh, same thing with the general public. So if you try to bring up time zones to them, or the jet stream speed is actually pretty good. I like that one better than the time zones, because it's easier to understand. And uh, that also explains why the South America, uh, Australia flights, if you don't hit the jet stream, it takes way longer. You hit the jet stream, oh, you're cruising. And, uh, and, and they just hide it. And they, and they also tuck the stuff in the, uh, uh, remember most of the population is in the outer ring, or in the inner ring. So the outer ring, which is huge chunks of ocean, they can fold and tuck and do stuff all, all day long. Sorry, one more thing about time zones, which would be the, uh, the Bering Strait. Uh, by Alaska, you know, where Alaska meets uh, Russia. By the way, for those of you who, who forgot, we bought Alaska from Russia. That was a whole Civil War thing, another conspiracy for another time. Uh, where, the very, where, uh, where Alaska meets the Russian line, it makes a three, three hour jump. Where did the three time zones go? Those are huge. You know, that's from, that's from here to Chicago, right? Or no, I'm sorry, from, from West Coast, that's two time zones in. Where, where, what happened to those three time zones? That's because the bike spoke, you'd have to condense them up towards the top, and hopefully, and again, you condense it up there to where nobody notices, it's brilliant. You don't tell the truth, size.com, you can show, like, you can grab a country and it, it'll expand it for you. Yes. Like the north is way smaller than Abs Absolutely, and you guys know the, um, you know, before I got into Flat Earth, the, uh, the, the Gall Peters map, of course, you know, that's, that's the true, if you, the Mercator map that we're all shown in school, which they should have changed forever ago, they don't because it's easier to, it's like it's been so long, it's like we're just going to keep using it, even though it's like, for example, Greenland, you know, it should be absolutely tiny compared to Africa, but they make it as big as Africa. And, and, so, and like Germany is absolutely way out of whack. I mean, everything, just the Gall Peters map, but when you like put it into a flat earth map, yeah, you can get some weird. But yes, good point. You. What do you think you're going to do with the Artemis? Oh, Artemis? Oh, no, they're, they're not. 
they, in fact, my, my no, they're not. Armas is doomed. They, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do. That's why the trolls. What social media has changed things now to where when you run a troll, you can gauge the temperature of the population in real time. So when India crashed, and when Japan crashed, and when Odysseus crashed, they could they could gauge kind of no different than uh, I'll give you a great example. Um, the Tesla Roadster in space from some years ago. You guys remember that, right? They only did it once. Tesla Roadster in space was absolutely horrendous. I thought it was fake. I thought when it, the link was sent to me, I thought it was Jaren screwing around with me. And it wasn't, you know? Because it, it's like, it's like, look, did Jared make this? And then somebody's typing, he's going, no, that's a live stream. I was going, the hell it is. There's no way there could be a live stream. But it went, it's, it, but they were so nervous about it, for example, the little things, like there was no logos on the car. Right, huge companies, Tesla and SpaceX. There's no that thing should have been NASCAR. It should have been wall-to-wall -wall endorsements, and it wasn't. Even the even the mannequin didn't have uh, an endorsement on it. Um, not to mention, you could have. I mean, come on, capitalism. You could have sold the rights to that thing almost immediately. Which was, uh, in fact, why they used the convertible. Why didn't they use the, the S class, you know, which is with their flagship, right? In fact, they could have. They could. Disney would have paid for the whole thing, right? All you had to do is put what uh, Stormtrooper, Iron Man, Groot, and uh, I don't know, Thanos in, 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 in the seats, and that's it. The whole thing pays for itself. So for, translate that to Artemis, right? Artemis is, is doomed because I don't think, again, this is hypothetical, but I don't think we were ever supposed to be that far. By the time the pandemic happened, Artemis One was already in production, but. They've always they've been trying for the last couple of years to kick off some sort of military theater. In Ukraine not working. The the Russians are far too cagey. They're they're not going for it. Taiwan not going for it. The Chinese we can't get China to come in and take Taiwan. I don't know why, other than they know that. By the way, you know, I know why, and that is if China comes in and takes Taiwan, we owe China a trillion dollars right now. If you guys didn't know, if we, all we would do is say they screwed up and, and we, one of our ships got damaged and what happens in war, and something like that is all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we don't owe you a trillion dollars anymore. That's an expensive proposition. So they, they don't want to do it. But to your point, I think that was supposed to kick off. And uh, same thing with uh, the Israel-Palestine thing. That was through Iran. Iran was supposed to come in and kick things off. We can't get, Amer uh, we can't get America's enemies or perceived enemies to, to attack us. That was supposed to be the distraction. Artemis II is not supposed to happen. Artemis III is not supposed to happen. There's supposed to be some sort of war that's happening that the news can just run on. But we can't do it. We, the Scary America campaign, we, our myth, like, I love America, don't be, get me wrong, but we've created our larger than life image so much that no one, no one wants to do it. It's like, oh yeah, we know that America may look weaker than it was, but they're not. It's, and so they're scared to death. Again, look up how many carrier groups we have compared to the rest of the world. Uh, you. So Mark, um, you have touched on pretty much every movie, uh, uh, propaganda, space. Uh, however, there's one that I haven't heard you speak of. What? And it was from the 1950s, I think. It's called Lost Horizon. <laughs> OK. OK. No. Won't waste any time here, but it's about a group of people that go up to the north and they, they bust through and they find all this lush land and whatnot. It's got flatters written all over it. I oh. just haven't heard it for take at all. I haven't, I haven't heard of it. And, and, and probably deliberately so. I mean, you're right. I, I absorb a lot of media, as you guys can tell. I know a lot of references from a lot of different things. But there's certain things they don't like talking about. Like, for example, um, the book The Smoky God. I love that book. And I think it's fantastic. But no one wants to, no one wants to cover it. Uh, my favorite book, of, call, of course, of all time is Mysterious Stranger by uh, Mark Twain. Uh, it was one of the last books. He never published it. Uh, when he was, a lot of people don't know that Mark Twain in his later years, he was hanging out with Tesla on a regular basis. And I think it kind of messed with him somewhat. Uh, you. Do you give feedback to the community as a whole? Like, what, what do you think the biggest blind spot is? Like, what do you think the biggest blind spot is? Yeah. Oh, because that's a small question? Okay. <laughs> okay, no, I'll answer it. I, 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 I'm not shy about answering that. Okay, so as far as critiquing, believe it or not, I, I'm not as harsh as other people. I mean, there's other people that will, will say, oh, it, which is why we have so many clicks in the flat earth world. We have so many clicks. 
you know, camps we go into is I try to remind people it's like better to be busy than be bored, right? Um, uh, you, you want your, your forces, you don't want them resting on their laurels, and we don't. We're constantly doing stuff, and if there's infighting, there's infighting. Um, but as far as the, the only criticism I have, isn't a criticism, it's just, it's, it's a symptom of what we do, which is when you are open up to flat earth, or just open up to the truth at, at large, you become open to everything, right? And there's no limit to it. And so some people, you know, they have their own wheelhouse of what, what they're willing to believe in, and then there's other people, their mind is cracked open like a walnut, and they are open to absolutely everything. Uh, the debate that, uh, that Karen had with uh, one of the uh, melted, melted earth thing, you know, the ancient civilizations, where the guy was throwing up every image on the screen was a, uh, was like, that, that even hinted at a melted earth. It's like, well, that's a previous civilization, every previous civilization. And I had to stop at one point in chat. It's like, is there any image that you don't believe in? You know, he believed in absolutely everything, which is, I, it's not a criticism. It's just, it's just law of averages. So that it's, everybody in our community is doing wonderful things. Absolutely, and the diversity is fantastic as far as, you know, all, you know, some people focus on experiments. Some people focus on tearing down NASA. Some people focus on music. I mean, I love that. It's like, we, we have a huge music community for whatever reason, but that doesn't really surprise me because it creative minds, right? As far as who's running the world, right? Um, you could ask everybody in this room to do a silent survey and say, okay, what are your top 10, in order of importance, the groups that, that run the world, right? Is it the Bilderbergs? Is it the Rothschilds? Is it the Council of Foreign Relations? The Trilats? Uh, the Masons? Uh, the Jesuits, and so on and so on and so on, right? Everyone's going to have a different list, even if you just put the top 10. I tend to go with the, the first rule of power has never ever changed, which is stated. That, that rule has never ever changed. Napoleon said it best, which is you never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown, which means never, they can't find you if they don't know who you are. So when it comes to, you can't, it's something I talked to somebody earlier, which is you can't be the puppet and the puppet master simultaneously. It's the curse of being the puppet master, right? You want to be on stage with these people, but you know how dangerous it is, because then they know who you are. I mean, come on, even the Rothschilds didn't really accumulate their huge fortune until 1812, right? Until, until Waterloo. That was their big thing. They're, they're actually new money compared to some of these guys. So if I had to pick a top one, and after, after the top one, I don't even, I already bothered ranking the, the ones underneath it, uh, I'd go with the Vatican which is, look, the, the, the Roman Empire, the greatest empire in the history of empires. I mean, yes, we are the Michael Jordan of empires, you know, the United States Empire. We are show, we are showtime. You know, we are, we are the greatest show on earth. We have made ourselves to be the greatest thing ever. Again, the fact that in the 60s we could say, oh, you know what, we're gonna do something that Caesar didn't. We were gonna go to the moon, and we're gonna tell everybody that, that we went to the moon, and they're gonna buy it, because in the 60s, no one could touch us. No, and whatever we said was absolutely gospel. Uh, is it going to come back up? But the Will Chamberlain, who I consider the greatest basketball player in the history ever, if you can look up that guy, he's freaking inhuman. Uh, the, the Will Chamberlain of the, the Empire world was the Romans. And the Romans at one point dominated everybody, and they had standing armies, everyone, and they, they lasted for so long they forgot who they were. You know, they, they ran everything for a thousand units. I mean, they used the same short sword, for example, for 600 years. Imagine not changing your weapon for six centuries. That's how good they were. So when they finally collapsed, inevitably collapsed, into this concentrated area, you know, known as the Vatican, you know, the, it is the, the remnants of the, of the Roman Empire, and uh, they're the oldest. So the oldest, I think, would have an edge. And they're not just oldest by a little bit. They're oldest way older than the, like, yes, there's some European families, you want to say the Illuminati, where they meet somewhere in Bavaria or wherever it is and, and do their little meetings. That's fine, but I, I think the Vatican, look into things like the Vatican Library, where they accumulated so much knowledge that uh, they, I, I think they got the edge. That's just my opinion. Uh, hang on, somebody that didn't, wait, wait, uh, you. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, which book were you mentioning? Enoch. Oh, Enoch? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Enoch, I understand now why Enoch wasn't canonized. I understand it. 
because it gives away way too much, especially in our circles. I mean, if you guys know anything, in our circles, if you've never looked into the Book of Enoch, Enoch is basically the flat earth of the Bible wow. that they could not they could not post. It, la it lays out like detailed uh, like detailed stereo instructions on exactly how the world works, but best that they could do it back in the time, right? You know, now we describe it probably different. But it's like, oh yeah, here's where the moon comes out, here's where the sun comes out, these are where the wind energy is stored, here's how energy is transferred, and so on and so on. And to where, you know, if, if after a while, again, it's really wild if you don't know what you're looking at. Only recently, and again, if you've ever looked into like Zen Garcia, one of uh, Rob Skiba's best friends, he wrote some books on, on that topic. I mean, that's how he got into Flatter was he looked into it and he's like, oh wow. He's going, that answers so many questions. Because he had been delving into Enoch, and then he didn't he didn't understand it until he, the flat earth was the connection. Flat earth was the, once you apply flat earth to Enoch, it absolutely makes sense. Um, two others, well, I'll do one other on that one. Book of Jasher, there's a, there's a thing, I think it's the end of chapter three, if I'm not mistaken. There's this interesting thing where, I think it's Enoch. Enoch is walking off the world. Right, he's, he's, which is an interesting thing, right? He's walking to the edge of the world, and he got to this place, and I think this is where uh, South America was actually still land bridge to Antarctica, uh, or at least you know the, the outer rim. And they said he got to a place, you know, he had all these followers, and you know, like Forrest Gump, all the joggers that were following Forrest Gump, he had all these followers, they're like, go back, you're not gonna make it. And he got to this place of ice and snow, and more ice and more snow. And they were redundant when they said that. And then he walked off to a place, and then supposedly it was taken up, and the, the, the followers had to turn back, and the survivors were the ones that told the story. So, yeah, yeah, the, the non canonized books, again, the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is their commission that, that built the Bible, and there were a bunch of books they didn't include. Do you think that would be the timeline? There's, in my opinion, part of how the globe was created, the globe illusion, uh, and if you want to call it the globe deception or the globe test, I think I, I think part of it is by design. Part, by, and if you want to call it divine or whatever, but come on, it had to be done, right? Which was something I talked about in the clues, which is if there's a fence and everybody knows there's a fence, human beings are going to run for the fence. That's all they're going to care about. We, they, we've got a thing about being confined. We're, we're huge curiosity seekers and we, we love the mystery, right? If you turn it into a globe, you make the fence invisible. And then, of course, the only place where there is a fence is this horrible, icy place where no food and no no animal life, and it's awful, and, and the screams go away. Because think for it, if you went the other way, right, and you put, like, guardians, or a big divine fence that's a go away in Hebrew or whatever, or, or frost giants with big axes. Like, right? well, for people, it's like, wow, the frost giants, there's something back there. That's all we care about. So all you do is you say, oh, no, no, there's no fence. And it's really, really cool to go away. So it's brilliant. So yes, I don't, do I think man had anything to do with the globe, the initial globe deception? No. All we did was keep the secret. That's all we did. And you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Enoch, Enoch, yeah. Enoch was, yeah, Enoch was right on the cusp of being there the entire time. But back then, and who knows, maybe when they were looking at it, especially the Vatican, right? If the Vatican had the old maps, something I've talked about for years, which is if, the, if you have the old maps and you don't have the technology, it's worthless to you, right? Again, if you have wooden ships and horses, what are you going to do with it, right? It's, there's, nothing, there's nothing you can do with it until the internal combustion engine, and you guys can argue about what's the greatest invention of all time is the internal combustion engine, because with it you had cars and planes and, and efficient ships and stuff like that. And yeah, and once, once you had pressurized aircraft, that's when you change things. So you had to slow down everybody, and that's the genius of it, because once the government figured it out, you know, the, the government of the United States and then the Soviet Union figured it out basically simultaneously, then they have to, all they do is keep the secret, and for good reason. I mean, what, there, there was a line of journalists, you know, they said, well, why wouldn't you tell the people, for example, why wouldn't you tell the people the world is flat in 1960? By the way, the, for the plus ones, that's what we're talking about here. We didn't even know. The whole world didn't know. Even our best and brightest didn't know until about 1960. If you find out in 1960, let's say the U.S. government, do you tell people, right? And now you're just like, well, the people have a right to know. It's like, really? You know what would happen? You know what might happen if, if that happens? I mean, educationally, the, the libraries would have to be 
torn down, you know, for, uh, financially, world markets would be suspended. Uh, and then the big, big one is religion. They come right? after the puppet master. The what? They come after the puppet Yes, yes, yeah, you, you can. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't blame them, which is why I think we were being allowed to, we're part of it. We're part of this thing. You know, you guys are the tip of the spear for a lot of people because they're allowing part of this to come out. They could have, look, I know a lot about software. They could have shut down Flat Earth so quickly back in, you know, the mid, you know, 2014, 2015. They could use the algorithm and stunted us to death. And they didn't. They promoted us. And come on, our intelligence network is pretty good. So when YouTube promotes us just shamelessly for three years to where we're being, we're being recommended for people that look, like, look up potato salad recipes, that doesn't even make sense. It's like, oh, potato salad recipe. Here's flat earth videos recommended for you. And it happened again and again. Tractor me. It's flat earth. Volleyball. Yes? Yeah, um, there's a few people here on sure that are new to this uh, idea of flat earth. Yeah. Um, where would you recommend them to start? Because you would have to get this. If you're new to flat earth, all right, I'm going to do a shameless plug for David Wise yeah. because he, he bothered to, to get off the cards. By the way, everybody should take a card because it's right here. Um, the, the new stuff, I mean, I've got a short list on my channel called the Flatter Shortlist for New People, but I think David also references it. But there's a wonderful app that we created. We're very proud of it. I don't make a dime off it. I think David does, but that's what David does full time now, which is called the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If you, you've never gotten it, there's wonderful intro questions that, that, are, that are asked in there. Uh, but there's so much content out there now. Yeah, because there's big channels that convolute everything, and, and I, I don't even call it shadow banging as much as like, oh no, they just prefer the big channels, and the big channels are against us. So, but yeah, I, I'd use the Flatter Sun Moon and Zodiac Clock app for, for one, and uh, after that, my stuff's pretty easy. Uh, but like the, the short list for new people that I have on my channel, it isn't, uh, most of it's not even mine. And I'm fair, I use ODDs, I use Eric's. I mean, if you make good content, I'm not going to condemn you. Like, I, I'm not going to condemn you, you. Uh, so I just suggest. Oh, I'll get you in a second. Sorry, go ahead. Are you suggesting that um, man is not the ones who created the deception, but it would be like the watchers who came out? There you go. Who want to keep, who promoted the globe? Yes. And so, would it be a good thing for us to go against them in promoting the bladder? Go against the what? Oh, I don't know. I'm just asking, what's the point of us sharing? Oh, because, well, all right. Well, let, let, okay, let's talk end game here, right? I was like, why, why do I keep doing it, right, Not after nine years? Uh, I am a big believer, and I did talk about this in the clues, of, um, if you guys know the story, of course, uh, I call it the Tower of Babel Protocol, which is, if you believe in the story, it's a very, very short story in the beginning of Genesis, extremely short, but I fleshed it out and turned it into a, a full clue, which was, I said, that uh, the first civilization, not us, the first civilization was too good, too perfect, and you're wondering where, I didn't steal that from the Matrix, but it, it does kind of run parallel to it, which is, the first civilization was too unified. They had two, uh, one language, amazing engineering skills, but worse off, they knew where they were almost immediately. Once they reach a certain stage, it's like, oh no no, yeah, I know exactly where we are. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna build a bridge straight to heaven. We're gonna go see if we meet God, and for lack of a better term, right? Or, or whoever subcontracted out the work and, and built this place. And that didn't go very well. If you know the story, right? God looks down. He's like, uh, no, that's not gonna work at all. And so, because um, they're gonna make it, that's what he said. That's that's from Genesis. He keeps going. Yeah, they're gonna make it. There's no way I we'll be able to stop them once they get up here. So that's when the languages were formed. It's like scatter, 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 language, 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 tear down the tower, and then make people forget that it ever happened. However, I think that every civilization, this, this is one of my angles anyway, I think every civilization has their time, their run. And I think every civilization since then has been slowed down. How long can we keep a civilization? I mean, what the ultimate goal of why God creates a civilization like this? Who knows? You know, is it the ultimate reality show? Is it so he can experience things and then bring it back in? Don't know. That's speculation. But when a new civilization is built, I think it is slowed down and new ways are made to slow it down. Little things like uh, uh, introducing like a 3% salt solution to the ocean. Right, which limits your exploration travel by octaves. 
orders of magnitude. Because remember, you in, back in the old days, you could only travel as far as you had fresh water. If you could drink what you were sailing on, oh no, we would be having this conversation. This thing would be over. So you slow everybody down, but eventually it's going to happen. Now, does it happen because the, the flat earth concept isn't introduced artificially? Who knows? But that's, for me, that is one of my goals, which is reaching the point where enough people understand. I think it's one of the thresholds. No different than software, right? Everything happens in software. If this happens, then this happens. If enough people reach the point where they're like, yeah, I get it, then God reveals a new piece of, uh, piece of the plan. What happens then, don't know. But I'm willing to take the risk because it seems like a really exciting exciting thing. I don't think necessarily it'd be like Noah and the cataclysm. That was a whole other thing or a whole different motivation. So it seems like it down. Well, move. How's that? I treat it like a, um, uh, I, I, try to, I try to be optimistic in that one, which is I treat it like a graduating senior class, for example, which is uh, you, when, when every class you get through, we'll just use high school, right? When you graduate, you don't get to come back, right? But nothing bad happens. You're just like, yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, we gotta bring a new freshman class in. So you got what's the, what's the old saying? You don't have to go home, but you gotta get the hell out of here. That, where, where the senior class goes, and I think, they, I think they go with a lot of the others. I think the others, you get to hang out with them, which is, you know, the, uh, where if it's subterranean, great. If it's interdimensional, great. Uh, but that won't happen I don't think until that threshold is reached. That's just me, but that's 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 the optimistic way. If you want to go the sinister route, you will, yeah, then it turns into the end of the third Matrix movie where oh, this goes bad. Uh, sorry, Jesse, what? Uh, Neil Tyson's video. Any anyone, and by the way, that's 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 a great one. Which is anyone that says they've seen a curvature, right? And people, I've had people say it from yes, pilots have said it, people in balloons have said it, people on mountains have said it. But then I've also said people that were at the beach said they see it. It's not that they see it. And again, I'm not trying I'm not trying to get you to pick a fight with them. But they see it's very Orwellian. They don't see it. They want to see it. They're conditioned to see it, right? Which is why Neil Tyson's, I usually just throw the Neil Tyson video at him, where Neil's sitting there and saying, oh yeah, you cannot see the curvature from 130,000 feet. And if Neil, the most famous media scientist in the world, right, their high priest, says that, then you challenge him. It's like, is Neil wrong? And I've had physicists come back. It's like, well, he doesn't represent us. I go, he absolutely represents you. He's the only, there's only three media scientists on television. Um, Neil Tyson from America, Brian Cox from the UK, and uh, Michio Kaku from uh, Japan. So that's what I throw at them. Anybody ever says they're curved, you find the Neil Tyson video. If you don't know where it is, uh, it's on my channel, among other things. There's lots of people who have used the clip, which is, again, the reason why he said that was he thought the Red Bull jump was scientifically dishonest. He said it is flat. He goes, he goes, no human, he said, no civilian will ever see the curvature of the Earth. Uh, it's like, and, and you know, he, met, he even gave details. He was holding a globe, and he says, look, you cannot see it when you're, what, two millimeters off this beach ball. It was brilliant. It, 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 that, held, that one clip helped me so many times. Because I just throw it at people and they just don't know what to do. Their head spins. Because it's like, oh really? So you're smarter than Neil Tyson. They don't know how to work it out. And they, they short circuit, as Wizard would say. There's a lot of people, by the way, that are out there, they're not going to give you honest responses. They're going to short circuit. You'll know because they won't get flustered. You'll see it click in them. They'll be like, well, well, what about this? And they'll completely change it to a, a completely different topic or, or a different subsect of the topic, and they won't go back to it ever. They will never return back to it. And I try to keep them on point. It's like, yeah, well, what about this? What about this? You're going to have to answer this. God help me if I ever get another astronaut, you know, in, you know, in front of a microphone again. So, uh, you. Uh, okay, the the mud flood thing. Like, you know what? That ties into the earlier thing. Mud flood, I appreciate that lots of people are, uh, you know, believe in mud flood. It's not one of my favorites, but I, I'm not going to shoot it down. How can I shoot it down? There's all sorts of fun stuff that point at mud flood being a real thing. To that point, uh, I'll reference a great movie, um, Dark City, which is, remember, when, when you want to res reset a civilization, all you really have to do 
is you, can, you don't have to wait a thousand years, you can do it in a hundred years. All you have to do is suppress the memory of the people that you're resetting it in. So if you want to bury a whole bunch of part of the civilization with ground, again, weird terraforming, who knows, it was a hot fix, something they had to do, short notice. Yeah, that's how it would turn out, sure. And it adds a mystery to it. It's not one of my favorites, but yes, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a hot topic, been for the last two, three years, at least. That no trees on flat, that's where it started, by the way, the whole no trees on flat earth back in 2017. Wow, that got a lot of traction, despite the original guy having such a thick Russian accent, nobody could understand him, so they had to delve it with a whole bunch of stuff. But you, Donna. Something new that I've been focusing yeah. on recently? Yeah. Um, most of the stuff I've been focusing on recently is the narrative. Um, because of what's happened over the last three, four years, there's something going on, again, I call, it, I call it the reset, or the soft reset, or the reset that's just failing miserably. Uh, but it, it is and it isn't. Again, giving out, no, no offense to, to those that, you know, giving out shots, and you know, 70% of the, of the US takes it, and then, there's supposed to be a distraction behind it, but the distraction doesn't happen. So I'm kind of looking at it, again, I'm not trying to play 4D chess or anything. I'm look, I put myself, one of the reasons I, I can do what I do is I put myself in the, in the bad guy's shoes, you know, the greater good. It's okay, why are you, that's how I judge conspiracies, which is if I can't think of a better way to execute the conspiracy, then it's probably a real conspiracy. And so I, that's how I, I'm, I'm like, okay, what are you guys trying to do here? I'm looking across the board, and, and that's all I've been really focusing on. So with the narrative, yeah. um, I've been, I've been studying the narrative on old world buildings, yeah. and they say they're built in one year, back in the 1800s, you know, they're built in one year, and it's across, across the plane, across the earth, right. all these buildings, and I was wondering if you've gotten into any of that, the uh, narratives are just old. I, I have, again, not one of my favorites, but I think it's absolutely possible, which is why I reference uh, Dark City as much as I do. If you guys don't know what Dark City is, it's a, it's a movie about how they grab a huge chunk of a city from Earth, and they manipulate their memories on a regular basis, so every time they wake up, they are in a different state of mind, and they're constantly doing it. They're, they're constantly resetting them all the time. They have sometimes gradually, sometimes uh, uh, severely. Uh, but could it be done? Yeah. Could you use old world buildings and hide it within something? Sure. Yeah, so good. And combination with mud floods. Absolutely. The who? Oh, Dark City? Yeah, Dark City is a, a great underrated movie. And trivia, uh, some of the sets, because they didn't have a lot of money, some of the sets used in Dark City were used for The Matrix, the first Matrix movie, including uh, specifically the, the city when you're running across the rooftops. That Those were Dark City rooftops. It's like, hey, don't throw those away. We can use them. Uh, yeah? Balls out physics. What happened? Oh, OK. Brian Mullen, balls out physics, one of the most underrated and I am so sorry what happened to him. You probably know some of the story, but I'll, I'll tell you anyway for the people that don't know. So the first conference, one of our early guys in 2015 was a guy named Brian Mullen, who was a full-blown structural engineer uh, that made a channel called Balls Out Physics, and he was doing something called the Force the Line series. It was really, really awesome. And he was supposed to be the co-founder of the first conference in Raleigh, along with Robbie Davidson. However, what I did not realize back then was if you get into a profession that requires a certificate, right? So like you have to, to be a doctor, you have to be certified, a psychologist, and even engineers. You have to you know, take a test and accountants and that sort of thing. Once you take that test and become certified, you are now beholden to the institution that you are now you know, are part of. So in his case, he was part of the structural engineers community. And once some of the structural engineers, remember 2015, there were a lot of flat earthers that were catching hell. You know, it was, it was bad. And once they found out that Brian Mullen was a full-blown structural engineer, they were structural engineers that called, there's a hotline out there that you could call and report behavioral violations. It's like he's not representing us well. And because he did that, they, they called him up. He had to lawyer up. And so, and they said, you've got to back away from this immediately if you ever want to do structural engineering again. 
and that's exactly what, what he did. And so that's when Robert Gibson took over the, the rest of the conferences, and Brian never fully went back. Now, his content's still out there, which is really, really great, and I'm glad they're not going to let him die. You know, they're, they're going to keep his content out there for a long time, and I was really happy. I wish he would come back, but I understand it. It's like, yeah, you want to give up being a structural engineer? You know, for, for that, the same thing with the doctors and what's been happening for the last three years. The lots of doctors have come out if they wanted to, but they're not going to be doctors anymore. Yes? Which is, uh, yeah, if you guys don't know, which is the friends, family, and coworkers. What's the worst one to, to give you to give you hell? Actually, if, I did. My friends, family, and coworkers were awesome. Oh. Management. Oh. The, the friends, family, and coworkers were like, hey, 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 how's it going? Hey, man, cool, you know? And then the manager was like, yeah. yeah no, and Depending on who the management is. but you're going to hear it every once in a while. It's like, why does it matter? Why, why would it matter that the Earth is flat? You know, that's, that's usually the desperate Hail Mary that they'll get thrown at you. you know, when, they're done, when you're done you know, hitting them with all sorts of proofs, like, why does it matter? I still got to go to work in the morning. My kids hate me. My wife doesn't respect me. And blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, okay, it doesn't matter until you start believing it. And when you believe it, it will change you. And, and I try to tell people, I go, look, it changes the world or the universe from this massive, incomprehensible thing to a giant studio apartment. And not only that, it's a place that was built for you. Right? It was built for you for a reason, right? And you, it's very intimate. And you know, the sky, the stars, everything was built, and you have a purpose here. Now, I'm not going to go on, on exactly what that purpose might be. 
but at the same time, it makes it much more intimate. You know, the stars, you know, again, we, we read it. It's like, look, the, the, the sun, you know, for a certain purpose, the moon for a certain purpose. I believe the stars, you know, not only, not only is everything in the sky just part of a giant, heavily ornamented clock system that predates language, but it's also meant to inspire, you know, signs and wonders and, and everything else. It's a, it's a beautiful place, but most people don't see it because they're just, they're just blind to it. So. Right. It, it is tough to get people to the the, the the system was designed you know designed for people to worship money and uh, again you you all there's all hope you know everyone here I'm sure has run into people that you've converted that you changed and you didn't even expect it and you'll know well, I'm saying again not here to convince you not here to persuade you just put the idea in your head and you'll know because what will happen is some weeks or months later you'll run into that same person that'll have questions and they wouldn't ask if they didn't care. Right? They wouldn't ask if they were just well, you're waving you off. Like, you know, because they'll come up and say, what about this? Or how does this work? I get that asked constantly. Yeah. Yes. Basically, I have friends who are Yeah. They have a system. Yeah. So we're in a prison. What about us? Yeah, but we've got bad times. We've got running hot, cold water. We've got sidewalks. We've got cars. We've got things that change. Right. Right. Yeah, the, there is that. For, for coming in. Thank you for the questions. I will be here. And uh, if you need anything else, I'm not going anywhere. So thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mark. Yep.